Muy buenas tardes, bienvenidas y Good afternoon, welcome to ADAPT, the first Iberian conference on climate change adaptation. This is a conference that comes from the European project SHARA and it is organized by the Ministry of the Ecological Transition and Demographic Challenge and also by the Biodiversity Foundation and the Spanish, Cli and the Spanish Climate Change Office together with the Portuguese Agency for the Environment. So, as you can see, this is a conference that wants to uh, center the topic on the adaptation of on the climate change. We will have 80 speakers, uh, professionals from Portugal and Spain, and we have 1,500 participants in this conference at the first um, at the first conference on climate change adaptation. You can follow us through the social media and as well as from our site. We will be using the hashtag ADAPT. My name is, I'm Isabel Moreno, I'm a physicist and I communicate it and I will be with you in this uh, conference that has been translated into Portuguese, Spanish and English. And so without further ado, we will get into the theme of what to expect on this conference. I'm not going to answer the questions, but I am now presenting the director, Valvanera. She will be presenting about the topics that we will uh, be talking about. Hello, welcome. Thank you, everybody. I have a question for you. Why is it important to have an Iberian conference on this thematic, on this topic, on climate change adaptation? Thank you for your question. Well, welcome everybody in the name of the ministry of, for the ecological transition and demographic challenge we are glad for be participating in this conference and we have to start breaking these bar barriers in terms of um, the actual situation so we have to do it everything online but as i was saying we are happy to be here uh, working together because spain and portugal we are living in the same territory we are part of the same region the macaronesia region which is a really special region and in this territory that we share we have to really um, we have similar impacts and similar um, problems, so that's why we are having this conference, uh, Spain and Portugal together, so that we can uh, share our knowledge and uh, really answer to all the conflicts that we are dealing with and that are a wake-up call for the real, for the climate change adaptation. We will be having risks in the future that will be really important so this is a call to um, collaborate with other countries and also to share our work we have been working many many years uh, to have political practices but uh, also we have to um, adapt to the new situations and really answer to the problems of the gas emissions and so we have this vision of actually having a tool that will be a stable tool that we want to present to you and and how to answer to the challenges that we are facing this conference uh, will help us to share experiences and also to give uh, clear signals to society on how to um, actually uh, act in terms of um, the climate change and also to be able to give answers to the society so we so, um, as I say, in the Macaronesia region, we have the same impacts on climate change in this region and we have to adapt to them. Thank you. Yes, we have many shared challenges that we will be talking about in the conference. We will have 10 different conferences that talk about the main 
problems and main challenges from the climate change, not only about the climate, but, all, but also about the social consequences. Yes, I think the most important thing is to share all the knowledge that we will, that we have been compiling through all the years, and we have many important uh, talks in the, we will have 80 speakers and 10 different panels, so this is a place to share and not only to listen, we tried to share it in an innovative way to create a space, a virtual space where um, not only you can listen to the specialists on these really important topics that we all have in mind as for example the health um, topic or the housing topic which are really um, having a great impact on the climate change but also about the forest and different topics. We are, we want to interact with the participants, so we created a networking space, a virtual cafe, where mm, we want to share knowledge, experiences. So this is a meeting point where we can really uh, grow and share our experiences and sensibility. And we want this conference to be um, a reference for the Euro European Union. We want that the European Union with this project that they help us help us do. We want them to see that different countries can be able to cooperate in these really important politics about re the impacts and about giving answers to the challenges that we are facing. So we have to be resilient and this conference will be helping us to see the best um, practices. This is a good reference for Europe because we are really in the looking point to the politics and we want also to be a reference for the other countries on the European Union. Thank you so much. So we have many ideas. I will just tell you two questions uh, from where this is coming, from where this project is coming and where do you want to go? Well, this project starts from the need of having a tool for the society to be well informed to have a society that can give answers to the questions and can act on the challenge of climate change. This is really important, that's why we are here. This is uh, important because we don't have uh, only one solution, we have many different uh, impacts on climate change, so we need many different solutions and society has to be able to value and to be able to know what type of solutions they want as a society. And we want to translate all the inf scientific information. It is important because we are now starting to create the new politics on adaptation. And within this crisis, we understand that we have to be prepared. It is really important to act in advance and the politics on adaptation are an opportunity to, um, uh, to have a great social value and to really give answers to all the challenges that we are facing. Thank you very much. Don't go too far because now we have many things to talk about in the next section where we will be talking about the the impressions that we have about the conference from the minister in Spain and also to the Portuguese Agency for the Environment. We talked about the importance of this event in terms of practice on the climate change adaptation practices. So we are happy to have the participation of the Minister for Energy Transition and Demographic Challenges, Teresa Rivera, and also Juan Pedro Matos Fernandez, who is the Minister of Energy Transition and Environment. So we start listening to the Vice President. Thank you. Welcome to the first conference on climate change adaptation. This is a topic that 
that is fascinating and complicated, full of challenges. And the worst thing that we can do is not being conscious of the transcendence and the transversability of the climate change in our lives. It is really stimulating to really uh, see how the interest on this topic is growing not only in the scientific uh, ambient but also in the in all practically all the uh, dimensions of society it doesn't matter if it is regional or local well we mm, we wanted to work together along with the portugal colleagues in this vision in the iberian vision because we share a lot we have many similar worries and we are conscious now that the incidence that has the climate change is really similar in many regions and it is it makes sense to work together we have spaces we have regions where we have a specific challenges such as the islands so we divided the different regions we have uh, territories where we want to better manage the different challenges that we face. And we have to actually have a permanent dialogue within all the parties. We think that the incidence on the climate change is not uh, only important to be studied but also we have to build a new way to front the risks and also we have to think about it in a trans uh, barrier way it goes farther from our um, borders we are in an interlinked world so we really have to think about this link not only economical but also in terms of territory so uh, everything that we do here has an impact uh, in another place so we really have to think it about the, um, the industry about the challenges on the dry epochs and also the impacts on life of the people we have to think about our production about um, the economical parts to be able to find answers we know that things get complicated when we go uh, deeper in terms of the economical uh, consequences in terms of the answers of, on climate change uh, we know that the conditions uh, really have a, an impact and an alter of the equilibrium of the balance that we had during uh, many many years so these changes will be an impact and will be a challenge in terms of cultural uh, impact and social inc impact but we have to adapt the situations and we have also to uh, have uh, important changes. Imagine the impacts on the agriculture and the fishing um, industry. We know that this has a really uh, great impact on on the climate change. So we know how that we have to be resistant in terms of the the electrical system our resistance in terms of our ports our conditional extreme conditions that are changing every day and our demands also are changing we want to travel we want to um, uh, act in different ways and the meteorologic also is uh, changing so we have to study we have to observe and we have to act um, uh, really early so, for example, in terms of regions where there are hurricanes, we know that the regions that protect themselves and know the challenges, those places where they, mm, they have uh, the strategies to 
mm, deal with hurricanes, deal it with it better than the regions that they don't prepare themselves for that. In here it is the same, we have to understand what's going on and we have to protect ourselves, our society, our economy to uh, really be um, able to build this resistance. So in this context, a really important uh, moment that we are living, we have to know what we want for the future, for the next generation of Iberians, and we want to do it with, in a clear way, we want to, we want really to take advantage of the resilience and we want to offer solutions and we want to really address the, the, team, the terms of nature to be able to think about solutions so that uh, they can be applied now and they can understand what it means to actually um, have solutions for these uh, environments, to have capacity of alert, of alarm, and to be able to anticipate the things that will come with our knowledge. Uh, we will be creating an international platform that will be really important in the fight against climate change and also to have a better society. Thank you, Vice Presidents. Now we will be uh, hearing Jean Pedro Matos Fernandes, who is the Minister of uh, Portugal. Uh, thank you, Minister of the Spanish Government, and thank you, Teresa Rivera, thank you to the Director of the uh, Climate Agency in Spain, thank you everybody. I am now saying hello to all the participants on this conference that is really uh, important in the, in the actual situation of the world. It makes us think about the way of living. I think that in Spain we and, and Portugal we have uh, similar challenges and we need an urgent res response to actually be able to rethink the way that we treat the nature. And we have to rethink also the way we live. We have, we are sure that we need this response to be able to diminish the, the greenhouse gases and also to have a neutral carbon gas until 2050. So we are now dealing with the pandemics and we have a new uh, way of thinking, we have to rethink the politics, including the importance of an adaptation. So we really have to, to rethink the society in a profound way and linked with the climate change. We need to really link the society and the knowledge that we have. When we uh, started the project in Portugal in order to adapt adapt the new challenges, the, re the main goal was to adapt on the climate change and uh, we have a project that will be uh, ongoing until 2023 about how to adapt in different scenarios to be able to integrate the system. It is really important as well to have criteria uh, in order to understand the impacts and also including the vulnerability and the impacts on the future. We have also to take in consideration the actions, the cost of the actions that we are having. Portugal and Spain are the two countries that are more affected and vulnerable, and vulnerable to the climate change in comparison to the rest of Europe. In Portugal and in the north of Spain we have uh, the coast areas that are um, also really vulnerable vulnerable and we have um, also many erosions due to the rains. All these will affect all the sectors of society and in the last years it's been really frequent to have 
uh, problems with water and we have to address this as well. We have dries that are more frequent and we have to answer that as well. We need to work together, different countries, Spain and Portugal, to have the urgent response that is needed and we have to go really profound on that. We produced now we know that we are vulnerable in terms of climate change and we have to listen to the different strategies on adaptation that have been developed on the country. So now we are with the financial framework in terms of climate change and we have to be really tough in this um, area. Portugal won't be missing this opportunity. We have a vision for 2030 in terms of climate and we have plans so that 85% of the budget will be held for the action towards the impact on the climate change so that we are a country that is less vulnerable to all the impacts of the climate. We have a plan for resilience in terms of state and also we want to go do a rapid response and also to create uh, economical growth in the future. We want also to work with a plan towards the 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 rainforests and we have many different uh, economical opportunities. We have um, private budgets and also we we need these funds in order to work um, together. We have to have a plan for adaptation and we will also have in account the Covid uh, pandemia crisis. We are working hard in order to really create these measures. We hope that this movement can guarantee the actions needed to do an ecological transition. So, dear all, uh, I know that we are in a really important point of the history. We have to plan strategically our actions and we uh, need to um, apply the knowledge that we have we want to create a community where we want to apply all these adaptation policies to be able to create a, a communication, a common language within us to be able to create all these projects. This is important to find new ways of adaptation and to adapt our daily routines in all the sectors of society. We think that the times ahead will need our um, action and we know that we want to have all the areas in society to be involved in these efforts to be able to have uh, actions within culture, water, etc. I desire that we in evolve as a group and this conference can generate a community to and also that Portugal and Spain work together uh, towards the, all these politics. So I hope the best success in this conference. Thank you. Thank you, Matos Fernandes. Well, we will have these interventions that uh, talk about the need of working together in Spain and Portugal. This is a challenge that we have in common and this is what we will be talking about in the next session. So, we start this panel f uh, talking about challenges that are uh, similar between Spain and Portugal. We have different speakers and now we will do a game, a little game with the people that are now watching from home. You are a lot of participants and we want to ask you something. For that we will be using Slido app. You have the link in the screen. You can 
It doesn't matter if you want to access it through your iPhone, you have the QR code that you can scan or you can just access the website. The code to get in is uh, at Adaptus, so hashtag Adaptus. This is the same hashtag that we want to use and we want to know you better. So we have four questions for you. We want to know from where are you at attending the conference. Also, we want to know if you live in the rural areas or if you live in the city. And the third question is what is your professional sector? And the last question is what do you expect from this conference? What do you want to take away from it? Maybe you want to link, you want to do a networking with other people and you want to understand what is going on in the, in the neighbor country. And now we have Jorge, uh, so there are many people working and they are receiving the answers that you are sending us, so uh, we will share it with you in a few moments. And we want to know who you are. So I repeat the questions. The first one is from where are you attending the conference? If you live in a rural or a city ambient, what is your professional sector and also what do you expect from this conference. So these same tools, slido.com, will be used for doing questions to the speakers, the speakers that we will have in this panel where we will be talking about the shared challenges between Portugal and Spain. So now you can answer the questions and we want to share the, your answers. So I am repeating the questions now. Where are you connecting from? Where do you live? What is your professional sector? And what do you expect from this conference? I don't know if we do have the answers of the participants. I see now that for the first question we have our about 20 answers. I see that uh, most of you are from Lisboa. See, uh, I see Cascais there. Madrid is a little bit, okay, there are some people talking about uh, seeing us from work, okay, we can see Madrid now, there are people attending from Oviedo, Aranjuez and Portugal. Santa Maria de Freira in Portugal. Okay, I can see the answers, Valladolid, there are some people attending from there, Santa Maria de Feira from Portugal. And you can see that the cities appear bigger or, or smaller in terms of how many people you see you are watching us from this city. So I, I can see that the majority of you are from Lisboa. Cascais as well has a big uh, representativity for this answer. We have 62 answers for the first question and the question is where are you connecting from? We have some people from Madeira as well, we have uh, people from Aveiro. Yeah, in general the most um, the most common city is Lisboa. Madrid is growing a little bit now. Yes, so let's see, let's go to the next question. Do you live in the urban or rural environment? And we see that the majority of you are watching us from the urban environment, 78% of you and 22 from the rural environment. This is a percentage um, within 78 answers that we are now dealing with. And let's see the third question. What is your professional sector? What is uh, Where do you work? And the majority of you, more than 60% of you are 
you work in the public sector. We have an 18% of people that work in the university or that do research and also 10% from environmental or social organizations and 8% are from the private sector. I don't know if we have, yeah, we have some other answers from the uh, student or educational sector, we have 5% and we don't have anybody from the social media, so 0% and 2% from other sectors. And the last question, what do you expect, what would you like to take away from this conference? The most part of you, uh, we don't see a percentage, but we see some ideas, for example, people want to take information and networking, people want to have an intersectional need to adapt to the climate change, People want to know what is the um, adaptation in relationship in the in terms of climate change. We have some answers uh, dealing with transportation systems and also knowing the way for the future to have uh, practical solutions and to be able to share them in terms of climate change or also agricultural and idric resources to do networking, to have information. Well, there are many expectations from this conference and the main one is to learn. So that we will do. And uh, we have the next speaker. We will have a panel, a really special panel. And thank you for all your answers. It was really fun. Welcome! So we have a fantastic panel. We have Blas Kurlik, who is the Chief of Adaptation Hulu in the European Agency. We have Pedro Matesaves with the faculty in the University of Lisboa, Inigo Lozada from the Hydric uh, Resources of Cantabria. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm happy to be here. With you, I will explain a little bit the dynamic of this roundtable that we are having now. We will have some more presentations from these speakers, but they will also answer the questions that will be um, sent to them in English. We want to have a uh, homogenic in the language ambient. And how can you ask them questions? Well, you can use the same app, the same tool that we use for the game. You can write down your question, you can write it in your own language and then the speakers will answer the question in their language. We will be translating the questions at, into English, but they will answer in their own language. So I will we will have the transcription below, as always, so that you can follow the questions. So now, let's do the presentations, and I will talk about Blas. Uh, good afternoon, Blas. Does the Environment European Agency have in terms of adaptation, and moreover, which initiatives are going to be developed in our region? I mean, particular initiatives in the southern, western European continent. Yeah, um, sorry, I had a bit uh, wrong, uh, not so good connection, but yeah, in the, uh, I have uh, a couple of slides maybe I can present to you, but um, what I can say that, of course, the key hazards for the southeastern, uh, southern Europe, especially Mediterranean, are, of course, the um, uh, the the droughts and heat waves and and of course the forest fires which is something which is really uh, the the key hazard which will affect the southern European countries. Can we have the slides of Blas? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have it? Uh, so the slide we... should come from you. Yeah. Okay. 
Can you upload the slides, please? Like we. Yes, good, perfect. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's the slides are here and. Um, as I mentioned already, um, my name is Bas Kuning. I'm coming from the European Environment Agency, and uh, I would like to focus today with my presentation on the southern Europe, where the key climate hazards are being uh, quite severe and will affect the, the regions uh, significantly. So, um, if I may start with, with the first slides, which is more general, please, can you go to the next slide, showing the... the which has been prepared with our colleagues from the Copernicus Climate Change Service and uh, hopefully animation uh, works or if it's not it's actually showing how much the globe has been warming in the last years and uh, that means that um, especially in the last few years and um, because the animation doesn't work now you could see that the Europe especially the southern Europe has been increasing in temperature quite a lot and um, this will have significant effect to the society to environment and also to the economy can you go to the next slide please and here shows what are the key uh, how the key climate and weather hazards are affecting our lives uh, you can see on this slide how many um, lives and economic losses has we uh, we have experienced in the last 35 years or so and the numbers are quite high like more than 90,000 people um, died due to the weather and climate events mostly due to heat heat waves and we experienced more than 430 billion of euros of economic losses across europe and only one third of this has been insured uh, insured can you go to the next slide please here the slide which is uh, rather important showing how the europe will, will warm um in especially in the future towards the end of the century based on the two scenarios coming from ipcc one rcp 4.5 let's say more more or less middle scenario and another one 8.5 extreme scenario showing especially in the summer uh, and towards the end of the century the southern european will warm extremely and in particular for example iberian peninsula the the increases can be above five degrees compared to the to the to the current temperatures next slide please this will of course have an effect on different um, extreme events and here is the slide showing forest fires um, and forest fires are the let's say the hazard which is affecting southern europe already now and based on the, the projection, this will be even higher, have higher effect in the future. Independently of the scenario, if we are looking into the Paris Agreement scenario, two degrees warming, or if we are looking into the extreme scenario, like RCP 8.5, the, the increases in, in uh, forest fires will be, of course, the most visible in the, in the southern, in the Mediterranean region, and um, of course, also including the Iberian Peninsula. Next slide, please. On the other hand, uh, also the coastal flooding due to the extreme uh, sea level rise um, will be uh, something which will affect the coastal regions in Europe. And uh, here is a slide coming from the um, our, one of the our reports based, based on the IPCC collected data showing that the coastal flooding in the future depending on the scenario, of course, but might increase by more than 500 times. This means that the coastal flooding, which is now happening maybe once every 100 years, can happen in the future like several times a year. And especially going back to the, the, the Spain and Portugal, uh, this coastal region will be also the most um, affected. Next slide, please. Droughts, another phenomena which I have um, already mentioned in the beginning. Um, here is the, the, this, the application which we are having at the EEA showing different, uh, let's say, um, uh, frequency of, um, of droughts and how this will be increasing in the future. And, uh, and of course, this, this tool allows us to zoom in to check specific regions. And here it's the zoom in into the, into the specific region of Iberian Peninsula showing that the droughts increases 
uh, will be also one of the, let's say, hazards which will be affecting um, the regions significantly. Looking into the mid-century, in the next 30 years or so, um, it might be that the drought, extreme drought, which are happening now, let's say, um, rather um, uh, less often, can have uh, increases by more than 2.5 times based on this, let's say, um, projection and based on this kind of indicator. Next slide, please. What I wanted to say in this previous slide is independently from what we are doing with decreasing greenhouse emissions by mitigating climate change, it is more and more important that we start to focus into the climate resilience and to the climate adaptation. So there is a strong need for action across society to increase climate resilience and, adapt and adaptation to uh, those unavoidable impacts of climate change. And that's a message which I want to give it um, in the, in, at the beginning of my presentation here. And how, what are the solutions? Can we go to the next slide, please? Firstly, of course, we need to work globally. We need to go work on the European level of doing, uh, of preparing different policies. Uh, and we have some frameworks like Paris Agreement, like Saint Day Fair framework for disaster risk reduction. We have sustainable development goals. At the European level, we have a new adaptation strategy being prepared. We have climate law being in, in the proposal, many different directives like water framework directive, floods, biodiversity. We have common agricultural policy and many programs which are supporting adaptation like Life Plus, Copernicus, Horizon Europe, and so on. And of course, also the Green Deal being uh, proposed yeah, uh, almost a year ago um, is actually um, supporting these activities. Next slide, next slide, please. Yes, of course, it's not only Europe. We also need to look into the different regions. And here is the actually uh, the slide showing what the countries and and uh, urban um, let's say regions doing. Um, and since 2013, the number of countries ad uh, adopting the natural adaptation plan or the strategies has in have increased from 20 to 31, looking into the European member countries, which are more than the European Union member states. And what is even more surprising, the, the cities has started really working a lot in preparing the adaptation plans or strategy at the urban level. This number of cities actually being um, signatures of the covenant of mayors has increased to more than 2,500. Next uh, slide, please. And of course, here is an overview of countries uh, working on adaptation strategies and adaptation plan. We have more, almost all the countries, actually all the countries now adopted. But what is now important, we need to go to the next step. We need to start implementing. And if it implementing means we need to start working on evaluation, what works and what not, what doesn't work, looking into the specific adaptation indicators. And only few countries have no actually adaptation indicators. And um, like I said, only 11 countries has only started with revising the, the um, let's say, the plans or the strategy. But all the countries have adopted in Europe um, the natural adaptation plans and, and strategy. Next slide, please. But of course, when we are looking into the specific uh, uh, cases or specific uh, actions being adopted, uh, and here is a slide showing how the cities are dealing with them with the actions on adaptation, most of these actions are so-called soft actions, looking into the planning, looking into the mapping, and only few, let's say, cities, or let's say 10 or so, have actually have a plan which looks more into the structural, st structural changes and structural investment into the adaptation. And for example, green loops, green walls, resilience measures, uh, actually protecting uh, uh, due to flooding and so on and so forth. So we need to also move from this kind of soft planning to the more concrete adaptation actions, which are uh, visible in the, let's say, in the day-to-day -day life. N next slide, please. 
Another slide looking more in the agriculture sector. Uh, agriculture is pretty active since uh, in adaptation. Since most of the ag agriculture activities is happening outside, is very vulnerable to climate change. Um, and um, uh, it's, it's important that all the actions, and here is actually an overview of different actions of adaptation in the, in the agriculture level, are not only the action for adapting, but also actions or measures which are having co-benefits to other, uh, let's say, um, sectors or areas, like looking into the how, to, uh, how these actions can support mitigation activities, how to Im improve the soil health, uh, the, let's say the soil quality, the health of the animals, how to actually be economical, valuable, and also how to increase the life at the, in the rural uh, areas in Europe. This is also very important. Uh, next slide, please. Moving um, to my last two slides on the health sector, it was also very important, human health. Um, we started the initiative uh, just now uh, publi publishing an EU observatory on climate change and health, uh, where we will actually publish information like indicators, but also some map viewers, some maps showing what are the key let's say, aspects uh, of the health sectors and how the health sector should adapt to climate change and also what the countries are doing into the, um, let's say, uh, preparing the, the, the health sectors and human health uh, to be more resilient to future climate change. Next slide, please. I want to also pr promote the Climate Adapt, the platform which we are managing here at the EEA uh, together with, with other partners, including DG Klima, um, which actually compiles all the information from, from us as an, at the national level, as, at the European level, at the transnational level, uh, and also the, let's say, sub, sub national level, um, and supporting the adaptation activities and, at all these levels and all this information which I showed before are also available through the Climate Adapt. And this leads me to the last slide. Next slide, please. I would just like to thank you for the invitation and thank you for, for uh, giving me opportunities to speak. If you want to uh, hear more, if you want to access our products, please uh, visit our pages or subscribe to our subscription and you were received all recent news which we are providing on the adaptation. Thank you very much for your listening on, and thank you. Thank you very much for joining us and for your words. We have to continue. Vamos a continuar con Pedro Mato Suárez del Instituto Don Luis de la Facultad de Ciencias de la Universidad de Lisboa. Muy buenas tardes, Pedro. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, our question is the following one. Uh, people that work on climate change are used to use the different pathways, no? the different scenarios, depending on how we behave. I mean, more emissions, less, less emissions. But when people are listening to us, they try to look for a magic number or a definite forecast. How can you explain the different scenarios in climate change in the Iberian Peninsula, taking this into account? Bom, muito, muito boas tardes a toda a gente. É um, é um prazer estar aqui a falar convosco, com todos os colegas de português e espanhóis. Bom, é, é... So, good afternoon, everybody. It's a, I'm glad to be here with our Spanish and Portuguese friends. So, it is difficult to explain about the different scenarios regarding the greenhouse gases. With we have to understand what is the projection of that particular economical activity, and our goal is to show the difference the business emissions and also the for example the the fossil fuels evolving and having impacts to uh, all the peninsula and the islands I'm talking about scenario where we have the climate change situation so we want to mitigate all these impacts on climate change in our region. This is a great challenge that we 
as investigators and communicators, we have the obligation to transmit all this knowledge and this data without euphemisms, uh, really clear and communicating the, also the uncertainties of this knowledge that we have. Whenever you want. Okay, thank you. I will now start my presentation. Um, thank you again for the invite. Um, I hope you like this presentation and thank you for putting it on on the screen. Okay, thank you. The first slide. Yes. Thank you. Well, I will try to show even that it is small and short, what are the projections and we will talk about some varieties that um, are from Portugal and Spain. We have to know, we have to have conscience on how is it working, the climate, what represents, and we will talk about observation models and how the soil is used. We will have some other models and we have the combination and we will study the climate in the future, so we have some climate models. Yeah, next slide. Thank you. So this... Okay, what are the climate models? We want to represent the physical processes and chemical processes in all scales that occur. This has been happening from centuries and this network of uh, climate models, they have a resolution um, about, from about 100 kilometers. So it is hard to talk about impacts. The development of these models was something incredible from that time. Those are were models about the atmosphere and nowadays we have models about the atmosphere and all the, the oceans, the carbon prints, etc. We have models that work and they tell you a lot about the system. They are really complex models. Okay, next slide please. Thank you. Well, and nowadays also talking about the projections in terms of the climate of the future, we have the CMIP5. Well, we have some models that you can see the graphs of, and we have the RCPS and how they grow, the temperature is growing. We will have a moment where we will have some uh, around four degrees above the current temperature. So, yeah, next slide, please. People don't have the, capa the capability to relate things in a global way. Why? Because the impact of climate change, it happens locally and regionally, but we have to know also about the global situation. This is why the scientific community has the, um, the, the goal, the role of showing that. We have different uh, possibilities. We have the statistical downscaling and the dynamical downscaling. So we have to focus in a one region with a high resolution practice. Uh, in the beginning of my presentation, I was talking about how we can act within 100 kilometers and do uh, really a profound work. Well, here I'm just showing some of the results in the regional projections. Yeah, next slide, please. Yes, so first of all, about the maximum temperature. This is something that uh, is uh, something important to see. Here is an example from Portugal, the highest temperature. We want to know at, until what 
type of degree we will be arriving so in the next 100 years what we can see is that there is um, the increase of temperature maximum temperature that is really really high three uh, in the coastal areas and five in the interior areas those are data that um, really show us the great impact um, between eight and five between seven and five um, seven and eight sorry decrease and something that uh, is really worrying about these maximum temperatures are the uh, heat waves the heat waves we can see here in the first line we have the characteristics of the heat waves in Portugal we can see here for example that in there's a mean heat wave in the present so and in the future we can see in the second line here this is the projection of, on the future and we can see that there will be about six heat waves per year so this is a great impact and we have to think about it the duration in time as well about these heat waves which normally consist on five six days and in the future will be about 12 to 21 days and um, so we will have about one and a half months of heat waves per year so next next slide here we have some um, scenarios from Spain um, so about the different scenarios the two the five uh, here we have the the alteration of the total in Spain about the temperatures so we have two different models and we have dynamic models regional models so here we have we can see three different scenarios the blue the orange and the pink and they are really different scenarios so we also have in the same scenario for example uh, in the same one we have a great change within it so we have to communicate these uncertainties we don't know exactly what's going to happen and what will be the impacts next slide please okay so if we specialize this information and here we have the data from the different models the regionals and models so what can we see about the future in Spain we see that there is a projection of four uh, degrees to from four to six degrees more uh, above the actual temperatures so we need to create a unity uh, between the two countries Portugal and Spain next slide please okay if we look at the islands and here we have some of the two models why would why won't we use these models we have uh, difficulties we have a challenge of having regional models with a high resolution in the systems we want to know what are the challenges that we will be having in the future for the islands and we need to really have a, a, an image of what is going to happen um, and what we see here is that for Gran Canaria for example we have about three four five degrees above the current temperature okay next slide please okay about precipitation this is something that is uh, quite worrying here we have a, a big map uh, and we will have a reduction uh, for the pre precipitations we see a gradient here and the colors and what we can see is that the problem with water will be uh, really important we have a reduction of 500 uh, sorry uh, uh, less than one quarter of the participation precipitations that we have now and so about extreme precipitation we know that the percentages that we are having 
lead with and we have a reduction of 30% or even 50% of the precipitations, of the extreme preci precipitation. Okay, what about uh, daily precipitations? This is a complicated graph, but here we have to see and how is growing. This, is, this shows the changes for the future and how the intensity of the precipitation changes and then there is an increase of the values of the daily precipitations that are extreme. Okay, next slide please. If we look into Spain, we have a different reality. First of all, we have here in the graphs uh, above the statistical results and dynamics. We have different uh, models and also we have the regional models at the, in the left. And then we have the, the loss of 10%, um, 20% about the... and then for the statistical models it's 40, 50, percent. So these are the reduction of precipitations and we have uncertainty. You see the difference between these different models. So we have uncertainty. Okay, and look into the islands. So in the islands this is the highest, uh, the problem is uh, actually more worrying because here we have about um, diminishing the precipitation in terms of um, 50% percent of uh, the current situation so there is um, a loss of uh, available water in 50 percent okay so the runoff of water has to see has to be seen as a global problem we will have more evaporation because of the climate change and so the will we will have um, a greater water in the atmosphere in the atmosphere and less water in the sub in the in land so that means that we will have less water this will be a really worrying challenge in the future so we have a graph here that shows the projection that is a constant in Spain about a reduction of water in the different dynamic models okay next slide please Okay, so that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Muito obrigada. We are going to continue now with Inigo Lozada. Inigo Lozada is the next speaker. He is the director of the research in hydraulic um, institute in Cantabria and also IPCC director. Okay. Uh, Good afternoon, uh, Inigo. Good afternoon. Which Our are the main question is: of climate change that are going to be shared between Spain and Portugal, and which opportunities can appear to face up this challenge? Well, I think that is an important question and I would like to answer it within the presentation, but I think that one of the key messages that I want to share with you is that we share more than what we divi than divide us. Actually, the efforts that can be made in terms of uh, uh, governments and also technological um, uh, challenges, it is, uh, I want to show you the elements that we share and I think that we have to improve our collaboration. So the first thing I want to do is to uh, thank you for the invite because I think it is really important to um, talk about these perspectives and um, thank you all and I think we share many things that are important in terms of impacts. So next slide, what unites us? Okay, we talked about it earlier, but basically our regional location, we have uh, characteristics that are similar in terms of location, but it's not only in the peninsula, but also the Macronesia uh, region, our islands also have similar um, distribution. So we are in the same territory, we have ecosystems that are similar, 
and also what uh, we have a framework, economical framework that is common with, within the European Commission and we want to give this general vision on the risks and hazards and also the opportunities that we have if we work as a team. Well, Pedro show, showed us some of the projections that we have specifically for Portugal and Spain and here what we have are the projections for the climate change in temperature like three or four degrees above um, the current situations. We have these predictions and in the second row we have the same projections but uh, different uh, time of the years. So we are in a different situation um, in comparison to the other countries of the European Union. We have three, four um, degrees of uh, change, but since here we have a different um, temperature already, we are really uh, in this area where you can see a, a strong red, a darker red. And something, something that is really worrying as well is the precipitations. We we, are, we have many uncertainties in this domain and as I showed you before, we have um, the diminishing of temperature that can get until 20% of decreasing. And here we have the situation during summer when we can see that the changes are, are even greater in summer. Okay, next slide, please. This is an evidence that we can see for any of the projections. This is the sea level and one of the problems that we have to deal with, uh, Portugal and Spain. So here in the left side, we have the projections. Mm, we are talking about these colors that are similar in the, all the coast of the peninsula. So we are dealing with um, a, differentiation, a differentiation of 45 centimeters in the sea level. So in the Canary Islands, we are detected that it can be a change of 90 centimeters. This is an important change and uh, also the frequency of the floods, possible floods, and we have the need, the absolute need, of really adapt our coastline. Um, so in the next slide, when we do the projects of the sea level, temperature, etc., the um, all the data that we use are from the Macaronesia region. So in terms of uh, climate change and projections, we need really uh, to work as a team because we are uh, dealing with the same uh, region and models. This is something that has been talked about as well, about uh, hydric stress. We already know in, within the context of the European Union, we know that 50 percent, uh, 22 million people are uh, within the context of hydric stress. And this is one of the first hazards, the first risks of uh, in terms of adaptation. The projections show that the results of the diminishing of the water within the year, this will grow in the different scenarios. Here we have a three uh, or 25 to 30 days of hydric stress for the population. So if we look further to other things about, for example, the fo forest uh, abundance, we see many similar problems. We have the factors that contribute to the loss of forest mass and we have the fires as the first problem and also we have plagues and insects that also will be affecting our forests. Next slide, please. 
about the fire in the forest okay so portugal first and spain in the second place we are dealing with the loss of um, territory uh, in terms of uh, fires the predictions are not looking good if we see the differentiation of three degrees we can see that in all the peninsula the days where we have um, fire hazard projection is um, increasing this is a great and uh, important um, threat to our region so next slide please next one another specific case is the flood in the coast and yes can you go back to the droughts yeah the droughts are really um, connected to the floods as well and as I said, I want to contextualize it. You can observe that at your left you have the total um, territory that can be affected by the drought. We have about 2 to 3 degrees and we are here in the Mediterranean area. And we have an uncertainty here in the, in the grey area that deals with the um, Iberian Peninsula. We have about three degrees of change and we have the we have an 85 percent of increasing with uh, within the, the regions that will be dealing with droughts here we see the possible um, floods in the coast area here we have predictions for the damages in the coast area because of the possible floods and we have to prepare spain and portugal uh, are having a prediction of 85 percent billions of uh, the cost of adaptation we are talking about the cost area adaptation and we want to introduce that but i think that we have many similar areas areas between portugal and spain we have similar characteristics and similar coastal areas that can be uh, adapt with the same same measures so i think that we can work together in that term we have data that about 20 percent of the coastal area will be erasionating and we have loss of 20 percent of the coast in portugal and this is similar in spain and we are losing the territory so this is also diminishing the protected areas and uh, also this is this has a great impact on tourism if we talk about uh, loose loss of um, well-being we talked a, a little bit about that but we have here in the red uh, square we project that the loss in all sections sectors can be three percent diminishing of the gdp so we can see that in spain and portugal it is in, this is because of the mortality associated with the heat waves and we know that the heat waves will be more frequently and last longer so they need to uh, have systems for example to alert the heat waves and if we see the graph above we can see a five percent of uh, lost because of the floods in the coasts and also the droughts next slide please okay next one please 
España y Portugal. So, what is my main point? Where do you want? Where do I want to go with, with this? With this talk, I want to say that Portugal and Spain have similar indicators of risk. <coughs> so we lead in Europe in terms of hazards in, in climate change. We have people that are being exposed to all these in indicators like um, water, uh, stress. We are in all the indicators. We are in the top five uh, scale of the risk indicators. As you can see here, <coughs> we have in terms of uh, water stress, fires, etc. We are within the top five in terms of uh, risks. Um, so from uh, we have been the fifth country with more economical loss. I think Portugal and Spain have similar situation with that. But also if we talk about victims, we have also uh, we are the leading countries when we talk about fatalities. So, in general, Portugal and Spain are in the worst situation possible. Okay, next slide, please. Um, talking about exposition and vulnerability, well, the European Union has this uh, distribution in terms of economical um, situations, so we are losing a lot. There we have similar problems and challenges, social challenges. Next slide, please. I'm almost finishing. And why do I want to highlight the economical uh, situation? Well, we have to, ta to take into account the distribution. Within the 2014 and 2020, we have been doing budgets for the adaptability for the climate change. We see that Portugal is working really, really hard um, using the funds of the European Union with the, within that uh, topic, but Spain is not doing that well. We see here in the axis how many, uh, what are the quantities, the funds that w are being invested in the um, climate change adaptation, and then we have the loss in terms of percentage of uh, GDP. If you can see Spain and Portugal in terms of lost associated with uh, Spain and Portugal both are really high on the graph so they are having higher loss and even Portugal is having more loss than Spain but we can see other countries like France uh, Germany thing uh, etc they are using more funds to adapt even though they don't have that many uh, GDP laws in for that same problem okay what separates us we have uh, frontiers it's obvious that we share a lot but the frontiers the borders separate us so um, con to conclude we have to talk about the risks and terms of in adaptation for the climate change we have to talk about the management of what we have our uh, resources we have to talk to walk um, um, and as a team and we have the capability of working together for example in the coastal areas so there are many opportunities many projects that have been done but really we have to take into practice all these projects there is little implementation of the project, so we have to work further with that. We should also take into account all the scientific bases. We have many projections that we are not taking into account. We have to promote the investigation, the research, and also to move the private sector through that. So to promote the government, the governance, and also to have um, uh, the promotion of the European funds to have common projects, common practices 
we have many opportunities to work together and uh, to really to face all the challenges that we will have in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation, Inigo. So we received many questions throughout all the presentations. So we had to choose only three questions. We have uh, 10 minutes till the end. So we will now pose the questions to the speakers. These questions will be asked in English three of them so we are going to to ask these questions one for for one question for you and the first one is for blast what measures quantified and timetable are needed to reverse the situations presented please uh, for you all try to be really brief with your answers because we have to finish in a few minutes yeah do you hear me do you hear yeah we me? can hear you yeah. yeah okay good very good so basically um it's uh the measures to reverse it's in it, it's impossible to reverse it uh the the climate change uh so basically what we need to do now it's to um to to actually decrease as much as we can to the negative impacts of climate change you know even as i mentioned before even if we are uh hundred percent successful with climate neutrality climate neutral continent uh, or we will not be uh, able to avoid the negative aspects of climate change and the measures of course depends um, from the sector which we are dealing with but also from the uh, from the regions so for for example in the southern europe the water issues will be high uh, highly problematic so we need to actually decrease the usage of the water we need to increase the the water efficiency especially uh, looking into the um, let's say um, recycling water and so on and so forth um, and then it comes also to somehow prioritize different sectors uh, which one would be actually being a focus and then looking into the how we can uh, use the water because for sure it will not be looking into the climate projections enough water for all the all the usage and all the sector which we are actually using now thank you the next question is for Pedro and also for Inigo. So we can start with the answer of Pedro and then we go with the answer of Inigo. The question is the following one. If the duration of heat waves is expected to increase and with the normal response of increasing the use of air conditioning and increasing the use of water, how do we reduce emission and manage scarce water resources? So, yeah, this is a great challenge and we are evolving towards uh, higher temperatures which will lead actually to um, uh, increase the usage of AC and we will have uh, sectors of society that are more vulnerable. So we need to improve the conditions on the housing and this is important as we know uh, the AC can be uh, have, can be can use actually renewable energies. So the consumption that is needed to um, diminish the, the energy poverty and also to be able to uh, have a better um, well-being, we have to focus in the renewable energy. We have a big problem, and we have uh, many different ways to to uh, look to it. Okay, talking about water, water is a hard uh, thing, it's a big problem. We have to uh, really um, increase the reutilization of water. This is something really, really important. Thank you very much. Okay, so now Inigo's answers. Okay, I think Blas and Pedro uh, respond very well. I want to highlight that the usage of water and also the problems with refrigeration, we are 
really it's not only about individual use but the industry as well we have to implement the technological solutions that we have and it is important to prioritize what are the border lines that we don't want to go through that we don't want to pass and in terms of temperature we have higher impacts on the ecosystem so we have to think about balance within all the different usages and we have to have in mind what is essential to be able to have strategies that are really needed in order to reduce the usage. Thanks you all for your time for joining us and now we have to start with a quick review of the sessions that we have in this conference. Vamos a empezar so we will do a really short review of the 10 topics that we'll be having in this conference. Well, this conference has 10 different topics and we have more than 80 speakers, 80 professionals from Portugal and Spain. We have 10 different panels that will be starting in a few minutes and we will go along with that. So we will start two to three minutes from now. So the first session is if the cities are adapting or not to the climate change. We will have a representation of many cities from both countries. You have to choose between this one and a second one, which is the challenges and solutions to the agrarian sector to adapt to the climate change. And we will have um, roundtables about uh, all the knowledge from the future of the new PAC. Tomorrow morning, we will have to choose among two different sessions. The first one will be climate change and water stress, and we will talk about the, the water services and the adaptation and also climate change and management of the coast areas the challenges that face the coast area the and the need of adaptation. During the midday, midday we have two session, sessions, health and adaptation to climate change. The importance to understand the link between health and climate change and what can we do. At the same time, there will be a second session about um, the Mediterranean islands and Macaronesian areas. We will have experiences within the two different archipelagos of both countries. Tomorrow, we we will have uh, two, sec two sessions regarding education, information and capacity on how to adapt to cli climate change both in Spain and Portugal and the second one is the reduction of the risk the disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation and we will be talking about heat waves the 20 we have two different sessions the first one about tourism turning climate and environmental challenges into opportunities and the second one is protective biodiversity in the face of climate change so this doesn't end here we have many sessions and we have to choose between two and there's something else there is a, a maximum fifth, 500 people per session so what we did is to, uh, act to do a YouTube link to be able to see the conference that you are interested on. If you cannot be in the session, we will be putting these sessions on our web next week. So after the, the last session, we will be sharing the main ideas that were shared during all the conference and we will end the conference with a really interesting round table. I, we hope that you liked, that you can in enter, register to the sessions that you are most interested and we will hear then until Friday. Thank you very much.